So, Aaron, we're going to get to the story right now about the. So, Clinton's <coughs> lawyer uh, was charged with lying to the FBI during the Trussia, Trussia? during the Trump Russia inquiry. Now, uh, we're going to this 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 gets a little complicated, but trust me, we're going to clear it all up for you. That's why Aaron's here. And it's not it actually isn't that hard to follow. Uh, so let's just start. Uh, Michael Sussman, Hillary, this is the guy. Now, he is a partner with Perkins Coy, who represents the DNC, right? It, that's the Democratic National Committee. Now, he's being accused of making false statements during meetings with the FBI General Counsel, Jay Baker. <laughs> and he's also in trouble. <laughs> uh, with Clinton lawyer charge, this is from uh, uh, Buzzsaw. He says, with Clinton lawyer charge, the Russiagate scam is now indicted. And if... In accusing Clinton campaign lawyer Michael Sussman of lying to the FBI, special counsel John Durham offers new evidence of the fabrications behind the Trump-Russia conspiracy theory. Now, I've maintained at this story that this was complete fabrication. Russiagate was made up evidence-free conspiracy theory, and they still don't have evidence for it. Okay. Well, what they'll point to tr Twitter trolls as evidence that Russia overthrew our election. Um here we go. Michael Sussman gave the FBI attorney Jim Baker documents and data purporting to show that computer servers associated with Trump and Alpha Bank were in regular contact. This was evidence, Sussman argued, of a possible covert back channel. Now, I know about the story because uh, Jenk Uger covered this uh, ad nauseum, the story about how there was a ping going from that bank to Trump servers. Turns out it wasn't Trump servers. And that was a complete, completely made up story, but we're going to get to that. Sussman told Baker, the FBI guy, that he was not working for any client and was simply passing on information that had been provided to him by multiple, by multiple cyber experts. Multiple. Okay, according to the detailed indictment by special counsel Durham, Michael Sussman was in fact trying to plant a politically motivated scam. The purported covert Trump alpha channel has been cooked up by an unnamed tech executive po positing, uh, positioning himself for a top cybersecurity job in the anticipated Hillary Clinton administration. Mm. So this backfired on multiple levels. So to spread this to the media and intelligence community, the executive and Sussman coordinated with Mark Elias, a colleague, of Sussman's at Perkins Coy and the top lawyer for Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign. So you see what they're doing. They're, they're cooking up a conspiracy theory and they're going to pitch it to the FBI, which is what they were doing. Michael Sussman and Mark Alias in turn coordinated with the private intelligence company Fusion GPS. Now you remember uh, they were hired by the Clinton campaign also. So they're all working together. Okay. Elias had hired the firm on Hillary Clinton's behalf to produce the Steele dossier, the collection of fabricated reports by ex-British spy Christopher Steele, alleging a long-standing Trump-Russia conspiracy blackmail relationship. So you see how this is all working together? Okay. So uh, this is slide 11. Uh, GPS Fusion then gave its marching orders to the Hillary-friendly journalist over at Slate. And they said, time to hurry. So they gave him this story and they said, time to hurry. Like, you better get this published. Right. And the indictment then describes that in response for who's the reporter at at. Uh, is that how you pronounce his name for? How do you pronounce his name? Franklin Foyer. Foyer. Franklin Foyer. He then forwarded a draft of his article that he's going to use to smear Trump to Fusion GPS. With the message, first 2,500 words. So do you see how they're all working? In so this is amazing, right? And here's the article. So there's the article. Was a Trump server communicating with Russia? There it is. It says, this spring, a group of computer scientists set out to determine whether hackers were interfering with the Trump. They found something they weren't expecting. Yeah, made up story. Uh, and so this is what Glenn Greenwald said. He says, just think about that. Foyer knew that it was the Hillary Clinton campaign planting the story, but did not bother to disclose that in his story. It was Hillary's own campaign and its operatives who concocted the story at the time she and Jake Sullivan pretended that it was Slate which uncovered it. And here she is. So she, she did a series of tweets 
where she pretended like this was in news to her. So there she is. Computer scientists have apparently uncovered a co- covert. So, so there's that. Uh, she goes, in response to our new report from Slate. So she's pretending that she, her and Sullivan learned about this from the story they planted. <laughs> this could this could be the most direct link yet between Donald Trump and Moscow. Computer scientists have unparent. What? Computer scientists. The secret hotline may be the key to unlocking the mystery of Trump. Uh, there was no secret. It's all made up. Uh, it's time for Trump to answer serious questions about his ties to Russia. <clears throat> so this was October 31st, right before the election. She's doing this. And Slate. And you remember right before the election this year, they were doing the exact opposite. They were censoring stories negative to one of the candidates. That would be Joe Biden. So this is amazing. Uh, four things you need to know about the Trump. Donald Trump has a secret server. It was set up to communicate privately with Putin type Russian bank called the uh, Alter Bank, Alpha Bank. When it when a reporter asked about it, they shut it down. Once a week, once a week later, they created a new server with a different name for the same purpose. That was just uh, that that was not Trump's server. That was a marketing company server and they marketed some stuff for trump's hotels plus a lot of other companies had nothing to do with trump and so this is what she's pushing and both hillary and jake sullivan were pretending that they had just learned about the shocking story from slate when in fact it was hillary's own lawyers planning it in other words it was hillary and her team who had manufactured the hoax then pretended they were just learning about it and believing it to be true because a media outlet to which they had fed the false story had just published it and here's hillary i mean here's that guy that uh franklin foyer the journalist who put took the story from the hillary clinton campaign and then printed it uh knowing it was planted he went on with Rachel Maddow, and you want to see what Rachel Maddow has to say? We're, we are blessed as a country to have journalists as talented as you and Franklin for writing. <laughs> we are blessed. We are blessed to have journalists as talented as you and Franklin Foyer planting stories at the behest of the DNC and the Clinton campaign. We are blessed to have them. You want to hear it again? It's fun for me to listen We're, to We are blessed as a country to have journalists as talented as you and Franklin Foer writing about this because, no, it's a, it's a difficult thing. And the <laughs> storytelling ability around a around story like this is very important because it's hard to get at the core of it um, <laughs> unless you're great with words. Um, <laughs> So, uh, Aaron, I just would come in and just, uh, but we're not halfway, we're about only halfway through the story because there's way more to it. But can you, I know you got stuff you want to say about that. Well, look, let's consider what if Trump had done this to the Hillary Clinton campaign, gone to the FBI with a story that the Trump campaign was involved in fabricating to try to gin up an investigation and then also leaked that to the media and pretended as if it was some huge explosive story before the election. I mean, this would be a national scandal. This has come out now, uh, and the reaction to it is it's been pretty mute. It hasn't gotten very much attention. And the reason why it hasn't gotten attention is because it's yet again more evidence that the multi-year Russiagate craze that we were subjected to was a scam. And, and such a scam that it, requ- it involved fabricating evidence and trying to get the FBI to investigate it and planting it in the media with credulous journalists who were actually, pr- in the case of Franklin Foyer, emailing a Clinton campaign contractor, Fusion GPS, to get their uh, approval or their input and actually taking direction from them when they said to him, as you quoted, time to get moving. And um, the indictment for the first time, This look, you remember for two years we had so many indictments in the Mueller investigation and they were these long winded things and like the Mueller team tried to make it look as if they were on the hunt of some, con- they were closing in on a conspiracy. But of course you would read the language carefully and there was nothing there. But they gave the media a narrative to make them think that there was something there, conspiracy. Now we get an indictment where we have concrete proof the actual conspiracy, the only conspiracy, was the one that was involved with the Clinton campaign and its contractors and its subservient journalists to plant a fake Trump Russia conspiracy theory. And the um, what they did is is um, is it, it's pretty crazy. So basically, Sussman, Michael Sussman, this lawyer who's been indicted. He's working behind the scenes with a unnamed tech executive. We don't know who it is. It's There's speculation about who it is, but he hasn't been identified yet. 
Uh, and basically, they're working with the team to try to come up with this narrative that could somehow uh, present a case where uh, DNS traffic, like tra web traffic between a Trump server and this alpha bank server, a Trump marketing server, as you say, is possible proof of a secret covert channel. And the indictment itself quotes the actual people who are tasked to work on this because this tech executive got some people involved to help him out to fake this story. And one of them says that, look, let's be honest here, there's nothing here. Uh, and we're really going to look bad if people apply any skepticism to this. And the executive himself admits that this is a red herring, that really that it's 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 fake. Um, and what's actually worse, it's not even that they try to make something out of something innocuous, like they took this Trump marketing server and tried to make that look as if that was Trump Tower communicating with Russia. Uh, this bank, Alpha Bank, they allege that actually some web traffic was concocted. It was faked which is criminal. So it's not it's not just this case where they found some web traffic between a Trump marketing server sending spam to people with an Alpha Bank address. Alpha Bank alleges that actually some of this web traffic was faked, which means that someone was deliberately criminally trying to create this connection between uh, Trump and Russia, however thin it was. So, so go ahead. So, not so it just it just raises questions. So this you know this is one more window into what a scam RussiaGate was. So what else was the result of a conspiracy like this? And I think there's a lot of uh, windows to look at here. So what so what you're saying is that they invented uh, some of that data that was coming from their server. So so in order to plant this conspiracy conspiracy, the Clinton people invented the data didn't exist, just like CrowdStrike invented that Russia had hacked the DNC server uh, well, that's, without that's, that's, any yeah. evidence. So they just invented that uh, because if they had evidence, they would have shared it with everyone. They didn't, which is we, means there is no evidence, which means they made it up just like they made this up. So again, proving the theory at this show that how is it that a pothead comedian in his garage could get Russiagate a thousand percent right when everyone else at for five years, a half a decade, was wrong and pushing an evidence free conspiracy theory, which no one will ever have to pay a price for. And we're going to get to that. Let's keep going. So here's but, here, Jimmy, go let me say quickly a couple of things. First of all, it's, it's important you raise CrowdStrike because guess who is the Perkins Coy Clinton attorney who hired CrowdStrike? Uh. I'm I'm going to I'm going to is it Elias? It's Michael Sussman. Oh, Sussman, okay. So the same guy who was working with this unnamed tech executive to fabricate a Trump Russia tie is also the same guy who hired CrowdStrike which generated the allegation that Russia had hacked the DNC. So what okay. else do you need to know? What well, there's a lot there, there's a lot more to say about it, but let me also say too what these guys were doing, you know, the um the, these journalists like Dexter Filkins and Franklin Foyer, who reported all this credulously without skepticism, even though, by the way, even even before we knew all this, it was obvious that this was a scam, which I, I've written about before. And it was obvious because, it, first of all, this theory is so ludicrous that like Trump and a Russian bank are, are using a server to secretly communicate. It's like it, it was obviously absurd. But um, their cover story that they told Franklin Foyer and Dexter Filkins is hilarious. Both Filkins and Foyer repeated this uh, without any skepticism. The, uh, the the researchers who they spoke to said that they the reason they came across this traffic is because basically after Russia hacked the DNC, allegedly, they became concerned that Russia was then going to hack the Trump campaign as well. Because if the, if, uh, the Russians were hacking Democrats, then they probably are going to ha hack Republicans as well. So what they told Foyer and Filkins, in which uh, Foyer and Filkins repeated for their audience, credulously, is that we were just trying to protect the Trump campaign. We were trying to protect the integrity of the election. That's the cover story uh, that both The New Yorker and Slate printed. And now we learn in reality what was actually happening. These people were working on a Democratic uh, Party connected scam with the Clinton campaign to fabricate a Trump-Russia tie and lying to the media about that they were just concerned citizens who came across some suspicious traffic. And I want to show you even more. So this is... Um this was way after the this. I'm pretty sure this was way after the story was already debunked. No, that well, it doesn't this matter. Was, this was October 2018 when Dexter Filkins of The New Yorker decided to recycle Franklin Foyer's story. Yeah. Which had come out two years before. Yeah. So and, it was already debunked, right? 
Yeah, but Russiagate was so deranged and our media was so reckless that the New Yorker, like, you know, sort of like this highbrow magazine, elite a journal of liberal opinion, decided to recycle this uh, Trump Russia bank story. And here it is. I mean, what more <laughs> evidence do you need? I mean, what more <laughs> evidence do you need? It's very, very obvious, and it's really Occam's razor here. The fact that we still have not been able to rule out the idea that this was a covert communication channel two years after the fact, the fact that no one has come forth with a plausible explanation for why this was happening, for why Alpha Bank was one of three organizations communicating with the Trump server in those months leading up to the election is just completely remarkable. And I think the fact that Frank's uh, story got overlooked or criticized as much as it did and the fact that now it's being revisited and you have the editor of the New York Times saying that there you know was a story there just shows the lack of imagination <laughs> it doesn't show the lack of imagination it shows that they were actually imagining the whole story and it was completely made up that's what that means and two years later she's still pushing a completely debunked story and chris hayes is giving her a platform to do it without pushing back and that's what it look that's what you look like after you've sold every piece of your integrity that's what you look like right there what chris hayes looks like that's the look you have on your face what do you what do you hey what does a face look like with no integrity right there and so she's an, again another operative uh what's her name Natasha Bertrand, and that's why I call them Jimmy Blue Anon, because whereas QAnon is on private internet forums and chat groups, Blue Anon is on cable news every single night spewing deranged stuff like this. And there's the guy right next to her, Franklin Foyer. That's the guy right there's the guy who who took the bogus story from yes. the Klan campaign, published it. He knows it. it's a bogus story. So does he. And they're all sitting there lying. And you wonder why people don't trust the news. You wonder why people get their news from potheads on YouTube. You wonder why people do that. This is why they're lying with straight. This is two years after that story was known to be untrue. There it is. I, and I just want to show you what, what WikiLeaks revealed, that the Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party has a long list of, uh, of their toadies that work for them in establishment media, right? Exclusive new email leaks reveal Clinton campaign's cozy press relationship, off-the-record Manhattan cocktail parties, planting stories with friendly journalists, all of it laid bare. And it's by Glenn Greenwald. And I just want, here's, here's uh, how they place the story. As discussed on our call, we are all in agreement that the time is right. Time is right. Place a story with a friendly journalist in the coming days that positions us a little more transparently while achieving the above goals. Who do, who should we have do it? We should have as a ver we have a hat we have has a very good relationship with Maggie Haberman of Politico over the last year. We have had her tee up stories for us before and have never been disappointed. While we should have a larger conversation in the near future about a broader strategy for re-engaging the beat press that covers Hillary, for this we think we can achieve our objective and do the most shaping by going to Maggie. And I just want to show you, here's the list. Here's a list of the journalists that were working for them. Columnists, pundits, uh, Kiki Finney from The Lead, this week's work just to start. Additional surrogates, Philippe Padet. Okay, so Dan Balls, Wolf Blitzer, Gloria Borger, Mika Brzezinski, David Brooks, Gail Collins, John Dickerson, E.J. Dion, Maureen Dow, Ronan Farrow, Howard Feynman, Ron Fournier, Mark Halperin, Chris Hayes, John Heilman, John Carl, John King, Mar Mara Liason, Rachel Maddow, Ruth Marcus, Chris Matthews, Dana Milbank, Andrea Mitchell, Nora O'Donnell, Robin Roberts, Eugene Roberts. Robinson, Charlie Rose, April Ryan, George Nuffleupagus, Robin Sproul, Karen Tumulty, and Jeff Zeleny. That's just the list. That's just the list we got. That's just the ones we know of for sure, super sure. Uh, so according, to, so I just want to go back to this. So just so you know, that's why no one trusts the media because they're liars and they're paid by the establishment to lie. And that's what they do. All those people there are paid liars. Okay. Uh, according to Steele, it was Michael. So, so Steele, the guy who put together the dossier, the folk, the fa he was paid over a hundred thousand dollars to put together a bunch of garbage that had no. They're just made up stories. 
It was Michael Sussman in July 26 to me who first informed him about the Alpha Bank server story. So again, more proof that it was Sussman who made this off. Sussman efforts yielded purported DNS traffic between a Trump adjacent marketing server and the Alpha Bank in Russia. Sussman concealed this plot from the FBI along with the fact that he was billing Hillary Clinton for his involvement. So this guy was completely, first of all, I know the FBI knew he was working for. So that's the thing that when I, when I first read the story, I'm like, wait a minute, the FBI didn't know that that guy was working with the Clintons? Of course. Well, the meeting with the FBI, for example, where he tried to push the story or did push the story, he billed Clinton for that meeting, called it work and communications regarding confidential project. Now realize what he's doing. Sussman, working for Hillary Clinton, is going to the FBI and pretending he's not working for Hillary Clinton at the same time billing Hillary Clinton for that meeting. That's ballsy. And that, and what that tells me is they're all working together. Hillary Clinton wasn't worried about the FBI and f uh, finding that out. In fact, according to Durham, all or nearly all of Sussman's work pushing the Alpha Bank story was billed to the Clinton campaign. Hiding the money trail was established Russiagate practice. His law firm, Perkins Coy, and the Clinton campaign concealed that they funded the Steele dossier until a subpoena. I remember when this happened. Until a subpoena from the House Intelligence Committee forced them to admit the truth on October. They had denied it on the. They had denied it, denied it, denied it that they f had anything to do with the funding of the Steele dossier. And then they had to admit that they did. They paid G Fusion GPS, who got the thing for Steele to do it. The FBI also concealed Steele's Democratic funders from the FISA court when it used the dossier to... So they used that... So Clinton funds, gives money to Steele to print a bullshit dossier about Trump. Then the FBI takes that dossier to the FISA court, doesn't tell the FISA court that this was funded by opposition research by the Clinton campaign. They conceal that. Why do they got to be lying? Because it's all made up. That's why. Along with the FBI, by the way, that's how they got the warrant to do a, a, a tap on Carter Page. And again, remember, you can do a two, there's a two hop rule. So if they got a, a warrant for Carter Page's phone, they can also listen in on anybody he talks to and anybody that that person talks to. That's called the two hop rule. Whoa, you think you live in a free society, huh? Um Along with the FBI lawyer who previously pled guilty for lying to the FISA court to spy on ex-Trump campaign official Carter Page, it's clear that much of the criminality of the Russiagate was not from anybody in Trump-Russia collusion, but by those who fabricated. So again, it wasn't Trump and his campaign that is the criminals in this story. The criminals are the Clinton campaign and the FBI. What do you mean the FBI? We'll get to that. The indictment of Hillary's lawyer in connection with propagating a fake Russiagate story that many corporate journalists spread sheds more bright light on the seedy underbelly of the DNC media access. And we just showed you all those uh, journalists who are on the payroll working for the DNC. And that's why they were almost all ignoring it, hoping that it goes away. The indictment approved by the Biden Department of Justice, not Trump's Department of Justice, the Biden Department of Justice and his attorney general explicitly states that the trump alpha bank story is a sham and yet most of the journalists who spread it natasha bertrand franklin foyer dexter filkins chris hayes have barely acknowledged it let alone grappled with it this is the perfect microcosm of the russiagate fraud that had the country endured for four years hoaxes were repeatedly cooked up by private intelligence operatives working for the DNC or anti-Trump factions within the CIA and the FBI, and then fed to friendly reporters who laundered the falsehoods by publishing whatever they were given without the slightest concern for what, wh whether they were true. It's just a small, this is from uh, Isaac Shore over at the National Review. He says it's just a small sampling of the journalists who were swept up in just one botched story on the Trump-Russia relationship. But it's nevertheless frightening how easily a campaign's political and very well-placed personnel interests set wheels in motion at the FBI and in most major American newsrooms. 
wheels that stayed in motion for the better part of half a decade. And just let me, Glenn Greenwald tweeted this out. Everything you need to know about how the corporate media works in two screenshots you want to see. Rachel Maddow rooted for the steel dossier to be true, and then it fell apart. And then she pushed every comp- bullshit story possible. And then how did she get punished? She got a new contract for $30 million a year. Do you know how much money that is per day? It's $114,000 a day. I'm pretty sure. Check my math on that. It's almost $15,000 per hour. That's what Rachel Maddow makes. Fifteen, Almost $15,000 per hour. Okay. Now, how did she handle this revelation that this story she and her whole network has pushed that is completely bogus? How did she handle it? Well, oh, by the way, before I get to that, I just want to show you that the FBI, the way they wrote the indictment, makes it seem like the FBI was a victim to Sussman and the Hillary Clinton campaign scam. Like, they didn't know. Like I just said before, how did they not know who Sussman was and that he was working for the Clintons? Uh, Well, I'm going to say they did. And here's what Glenn Greenwald says. He says that claim that the FBI was the victim and they, they, they were duped. It falls short for this claim is dubious for two reasons. It is inconceivable that high level FBI operatives like Baker would have been unaware that this Perkins Coy partner was deeply enmeshed with the Clinton campaign and DNC politics. And two, the FBI concluded very quickly that there was nothing to the story, yet never said anything allowing hashtag resistance journalists to continue telling the public that this fraudulent story was true. Indeed, Sussman's own Twitter account reveals an obviously close relationship with that FBI official, James Baker, throughout the summer of 2016. But the FBI, still under the command of former director James Comey, chose to say nothing about its findings which debunked the Trump uh, Alpha Bank fraud. So they had already debunked it, that the FBI kept it to themselves. And then they pretended like they were the dupes of this scam, when, of course, they knew exactly who Sussman was. So Glenn goes on to say, this in turn allowed the same army of liberal employees of media corporations that perpetrated most of the Russiagate frauds to continue to deceive the public into believing that it was true, long after it was clear that it was fiction. And so that's the FBI's complicity in this. And now watch how Rachel Maddow, who just got a $30 million contract for reporting reporting stuff like this with a straight face, how did she cover this story now that it's been confirmed it's a garbage story? How did she, did she cover it as a garbage story? This is how she covered it. On Thursday, Maddow called one of the countless resistance prosecutors in the MSNBC stable, Bart McQuaid, to impugn the charges against Hillary. L- so they're trying to discredit the these this indictment. That's how that's how MSNBC and Rachel Maddow is reporting. This. They're trying to discredit this the the indictment, which discredits the story. So they're. The duo implied that the case was brought only to beat the expiring statute of limitations, insisted that the indictment should not have been brought because the lie was not material to the FBI's investigation. So it's okay to lie to the FBI as long as you don't think it's material. And it implied that it is merely an attempt to appease angry Trump supporters demanding indictments from Durham. It was left unexplained why Merrick Garland would go along with... So So there's Rachel Maddow saying that, oh, they're just doing this to appease Trump voters, and it's a garbage thing anyway. Well, Merrick Garland is... Why would he go along with this? That's a Biden appointee. Why would he go along with it? They never talked about that. It never brought it up. And so here's my last slide, and we'll go back to Aaron. We have yet again convincing evidence of the axis of power. The D their corporate media allies and the security state services that again and again conspired with one another to disseminate false Russiagate stories to the public. That's how it works. DNC establishment figures, uh, corporate media elites and CIA and FBI and the NSA. So let me bring back in. Uh, were you surprised uh, at, at first of all, uh, Rachel Maddow again? Uh, getting $15,000 an hour to lie to you 
uh, do a worse job than I am in my garage. What would you What would you like to comment on the rest of that story? Go ahead. To me, it's a it's a good illustration how, how the news media is faker than Hollywood. Like yes. in Hollywood, the highest paid actors they they have to have some talent, right? Like they yeah. they have some they have some ability at what they do. Whereas in news media, the worst journalists possible, the people who like push frauds and lie to their audience constantly, get paid you know thirty million dollars a year. I mean that was that was Rachel Maddow. That was the consequence of Rachel Maddow pushing the dumbest conspiracy theory of all time uh, for four years. She had thirty million dollars because it was good for MSNBC's ratings, and the rest of the hosts aren't really attracting anybody. So that's the talent that they had to go with. But um, yeah, it's like it's it's you know it, it just speaks to what a joke our media has become, and you know on that point you see this this indictment uh, after four years where any single possible development in Russiagate, like a hearing or an indictment, whatever, that would like dominate the news cycle for 24 hours. It was like, you know, MSNBC was nonstop all over this. Now we get an indictment for someone involved in pushing a scam to uh, in the service of the Trump Russia conspiracy theory. And, you know, like we're covering it, but otherwise it's been mostly ignored and people like Maddow and the New York Times have been doing their best to downplay it. The um, like Maddow did her, her story came out, or her segment came out the night before the indictment. So she wasn't covering the indictment. She was covering a leak from the Sussman camp about the indictment and totally spun it in their in the service of their narrative that this was just some trivial charge. So she didn't actually cover the details of the indictment that came out the next day, which showed that the Trump Alpha Bank story, which she had pushed and praised Dexter Filkins for talking about how blessed we are as a country, how that was a result of a conspiracy, a fabrication. So she has not yet reported that on her show, and I, neither, I think, is anybody else on MSNBC because, again, they're not there to report, report the news. They're there to push a narrative in the service of their partisan uh, affiliation, which is the Democratic Party. And look, taking the big picture here, when you look at every single plank of Russiagate, all of it, directly comes from the Clinton campaign, all of it. So the first thing is collusion, right? Uh, where does that come from? That that started with the Steele dossier, paid for by the Clinton campaign. Then there's this theory, uh, and a part of that too would involve fabricating this Trump-Russia bank story, which again was paid for by the Clinton campaign, you know, overseen by their lawyer, and he billed the Clinton campaign for it. Okay, so that's collusion comes from the Clinton campaign. Then you have this thing about social media, Russian social media bots, and this theory that that swung the election for Trump, and that these Russian trolls waged this sophisticated brainwashing American uh, uh, operation that duped millions of Americans into not voting for Hillary Clinton. That also comes from the Clinton campaign. The Washington Post revealed this, that Facebook, when they initially looked at all these Russian social media ads, they concluded that this was just basically a commercial operation of people putting out you know, uh, uh, these these memes and uh, and ads to try to get traffic, to try to like target certain audiences like evangelicals and African-Americans, build a following which they could then uh, leverage to sell ads to vendors. OK, that's what Facebook initially concluded. But then veterans of the Obama and uh, Clinton campaigns, they looked at this and they came up with theories that really this was part of an operation to swing the election. And Mark Warner, the head of the intelligence committee in the Senate, he personally flew out to Facebook's headquarters and shared with them this new theory. And not long after that, at a time when Facebook was facing heavy scrutiny from Congress and you know wanted to play ball, then Facebook came out with this new theory that really this was the Russian government trying to interfere in our election. And Facebook apologized and that was supposed to be this big scandal. And then we have the foundational claim, the thing that started it all. This allegation that Russia hacked the DNC, stole emails and then gave them the WikiLeaks as part of this operation to install Trump. Well, where does that come from? Who generated that? That comes from a private company called CrowdStrike, who was hired by none other than Michael Sussman, <laughs> the same guy who's now been indicted by John Durham for taking part in, uh, for lying to the FBI about a fabricated scheme that he was pushing to tie Trump to Russia. So. It raises new questions about, you know, just how far does this scam go? And all of us have been told for four years that if we question this allegation that uh, Russia hacked the DNC, that, you know, that we're uh, like committing sacrilege, you know, we've been attacked for it as if we have to trust whatever the FBI and CIA tell us. But 
Um, the fact that Sussman was involved in hiring them, the fact that Sussman hired them at the same time as his colleague at Perkins Coie hired the uh, Fusion GPS to concoct the Steele dossier, uh, and the fact that we haven't seen any of the evidence used to used to uh, make this attribution to Russia, plus the fact, and we've talked about this before, that we learned three years after the fact that the CEO of CrowdStrike, Sean Henry, he admitted under oath that while in public his firm was accusing Russia of stealing emails from the DNC, that in that he told them under oath that actually they had no evidence None. of it. None. They had no evidence whatsoever. And the media, no mainstream liberal outlet has reported this damning admission. And that and he admitted that in pretty sure twenty seventeen. December twenty seventeen, that's right. Yes. Yeah. So in 2017, the guy who said Russia did this said, we don't have any evidence that Russia did this. And if we, so and no one purported that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I so just listen, to- Jimmy, so, 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 just, so just to wrap it up, given the fact that Sussman, Clinton's lawyer, uh, was involved in a scheme to try to plant, you know, uh, fake stories in the media and the FBI tying Trump to Russia, you have to wonder if CrowdStrike was a part of that too. That basically, because what do these emails show? They were embarrassing for Hillary Clinton. They showed that she was telling the public one thing, telling Wall Street something else, uh, that uh, that they were rigging the primaries against Bernie Sanders. And so if you could tie all this to Russia, then you could distract the public from the content of these leaks and just taint it all really as the work of this evil foreign power that wants to destroy our country. And then if you could tie Trump to Russia, then you could basically distract the public from all this. So, you know, we don't know for sure what actually happened, but that is my speculation about what actually happened is that basically just as Fusion GPS was brought in to do a job tying Trump to Russia, so was CrowdStrike. And, you know, um, we're, we're, you know, so some of us are out there still trying to report the story and get more information because, for example, the public has never seen the, the reports that CrowdStrike wrote and that the FBI relied on. Remember, the FBI did not inspect the DNC server itself. It relied on CrowdStrike's forensics. So there's a lot that we don't know, but um, a lot that raises suspicions that the rest of the media just is not following because they were too busy parroting the Trump-Russia scam. I just want to play this one more time uh, just to, as an indictment of the not only MSNBC, but in the presses in general, the establishment press. And this is why you and I have a job. I mean, what more <laughs> evidence do you need? It's very, very obvious. And it's really Occam's razor here. The fact that we still have not been able to rule out the idea that this was a covert communication channel two years after the fact, the fact that no one has come forth with a plausible explanation for why this was happening, for why Alpha Bank was one of three organizations communicating with the Trump server in those months leading up to the election is just completely remarkable. And I think the fact that Frank's uh, story got overlooked or criticized as much as it did and the fact that now it's being revisited and you have the editor of the New York Times saying that there you know was a story there just shows the lack of imagination <laughs> the irony of her word choice is just am- is amazing that uh, that we we lack imagination not the people making up the story this guy <laughs> Okay, and he's just sitting there. That's what, though. That's what a lying uh, establishment piece of shit looks like uh, when he puts on a suit coat and goes on MSNBC. When that's what that's the face he makes when he's lying, and he knows he's lying. And that's what it looks like. Isn't that nice to know? They look so nice and white. They look so white and truth telling. Oh boy, it's 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 amazing. Hey, everybody, we're doing stand-up shows everywhere. We're going to Florida, Baltimore, Buffalo, Portland, Raleigh, North Carolina, and we're doing a live Jimmy Dore show in Sacramento, October 3rd. Go to jimmydore.comedy.com for a link for all our tickets.